Okay, hi everyone. So I'm Nikki Mulder from the University of Cape Town, and I also run H3A Bionet, which is a Pan-African Bioinformatics Network, which is aimed at um, building bioinformatics capacity and infrastructure to enable genomics and bioinformatics research um, on the continent. So I'm presenting actually in, on behalf of my training officer, Kim Gowitz, who couldn't be here. So there was a big need for, for um, introduction to bioinformatics and actually all bioinformatics training in, in Africa. I could talk about many different aspects of, the, of this project, but I'm gonna focus here on the, on the community, the systems, and um, the logistics. So we have many challenges in Africa. Um, this includes lack of access to bioinformatics expertise, which means there's nobody in many, many pockets of Africa to actually train people in bioinformatics. And the other major, um, challenge is infrastructural challenges. Uh, we have um, computing challenges, uh, resources, and uh, internet instability. So we went through, uh, we went for a distributed uh, classroom model because we wanted to reach a very wide audience. And the key idea behind our whole um, approach was flexibility. So um, as you can see in this African map, we have these are all, all our classroom sites. We have real classrooms and then virtual classrooms. So I'm going to go through some of these key elements, starting with open educational resources. So in order to maintain flexibility, we, in, in our first iteration last year, we actually had live streaming and we had live uh, lectures from, a, from a, a lecturer who was sitting in a different place to the classrooms. Um, we also pre-recorded the lectures in case there was inter internet um, issues. This time, everything was pre-recorded. So people had uh, several days to download all the materials, pre-recorded lectures. Um, and then the practical assignments all available and, and classroom uh, teaching assistants had access to the several days beforehand. And all the, all the material is um, under Creative Commons license and completely openly available, including the recordings. So we have this face-to-face um, -face classrooms. So in every, um, to, to have a classroom, you had to actually have certain things that like you had to have the um, computer lab with speakers, um, some qualified training assistants. So there were some minimal requirements to have a classroom. And all these classrooms then had this, this peer-to-peer, um, so you still felt like you were part of a classroom, even though your lecturer wasn't there, your teaching assistant, you had your peers to interact with. And these classrooms periodically would interact with each other through webcams, they'd chat to each other, um, and they'd meet each other. And then the um, other factor was the virtual classroom. So here we had um, a, a system called MCONF. This is, was um, designed by our local South African um, SANREN. And this, in, on the left there, you can see all the classrooms that link. So basically, you open a room, all the classrooms, all these 27 classrooms uh, link into that. So each, each person there is one classroom. And then in the middle, you, the, the person can upload, the teacher can upload their slides. You have the, the webcam of the trainer, so there's a bit of more personal thing. And then on the, at the top there, you can see there's a chat session. So you can constantly interact with each other and with, and with the classroom. So you'd have, um, we'd have the lectures, either live or, or you play the recorded one, and then straight afterwards, all the classrooms that the teacher would go online and answer questions during the practical session or, or have a discussion, um, live discussions with different audiences. And then we also had a virtual classroom management system. So this is um, a Vula, we call it Vula. Um, it's actually a, a system that's used worldwide by different universities and in, in, in UCT is called Vula, which means open. It's a very flexible uh, classroom sy management system. So you can do announcements, you can have question and discussions. So people would also pose questions after their live session to this class, to this um, system. And often people who in other classrooms would try to answer the questions. And then people would all add, add the inputs to those particular questions. We could see how many people looked at questions, how many people looked at the replies. So we could see what kind of topics um, needed further discussion. And these are all open, so anybody can go in and have a look at these questions. Assignments could be run through this um, and automatically marked, tests and quizzes, and then this also has an, uh, a feedback form. So the main thing here is, is the kind of the interactivity uh, between the different classrooms. So we, we ran this in 2016, it was so popular that we were busy running it in 2017, so it runs over three months, two days per week for several hours. Um, we now have 27 classrooms around Africa. Uh, 12 different countries, 146 volunteer staff. So these are all the staff, we have staff training, so we have built a community of the staff. Um, we had uh, nearly 1,000 applications this year, and we've got 600 participants um, that are doing the same course for three months. 
So why we think this works is we have this flexibility so we can get over the internet issues. We have expert trainers that people have access to all the time. They go online, they interact. The volunteer staff are trained. It builds a big community of trainers and the trainees. It's scalable, so we can increase the number. We just increased the number of classrooms by 12, and it's free, and uh, everything is openly accessible. And so the number of people involved and the funding comes from the NIH.